Alright, so hello, hello guys. So today I'm doing something very different to what I usually do from like my normal edits. Um, so today I'm doing a tutorial on um, the uh, seamless Sanchez zoom thingy. Yeah, that thing. So we're doing that today. Um, let's not waste any more of your time and we can get straight into it. But one thing I do have to say, if there's any other tutorials you guys want me to do next, let me know in the comments and if I think people will learn from them, then I will definitely consider doing it. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get straight into it. Alright, so what we're gonna do first, like once you get your two clips, um, for now like I've just kept them quite short just so we can do like a basic one. Um, so you wanna begin with the clip that you're zooming into and sort of scale that scale that down to like wherever the character is. So the character could be like to the left or to the right. For this one he's just in the middle. Um, so just scale that down. And you can like turn the opacity down as well so you can see the clip behind it and just sort of match it as sort of close as you can to uh to the characters so like, i'm gonna do it pretty roughly at the moment just so we keep this quick but um as you can see it's pretty pretty similar um when it comes to being with the characters so keeping that that's fine uh then we want to like make sure that it's fading into it with the with the mask so just click on the mask tool up here and then you want to just zoom it zoom it out um to like a circle and then just sort of open the uh, mask and then add the feather here as well so once you add that um, we can then come down to mask expansion. You want to click on that to keyframe it and then just turn it down like the mask expansion down to negative numbers until you can't see it and then just go to the long and then scale it up like that. So it's like keyframe, so it's like fading in. So as you can see, uh, it's kind of really bad quality because it's zoomed in, but like as you can see, it's it's zooming in at the end there. That's how you want it at the start. Um, you can easy ease it if you want. I personally don't graph it because I feel like when you graph it, it doesn't look great. So you can maybe add like a little one if you like. If you want to add like this, like that, so it kind of scales in to the zoom. That, that, that's fine. Um, then once you've done that, so you want to add a null um, and pair it with this top one, and then pair the bottom clip um, to the null as well. So now it will zoom in, and it will be. You know that could still be there so once we've done that uh i recommend using position even if it is sort of down the center just because obviously you can track it where it is keyframe both of them uh the position scale and then zoom it in now to the to the next clip we're going into now however much you want to zoom in kind of comes down to you personally so it's, it's completely up to you um but i'm gonna just do it for like this for the clip so once you've done that, obviously there's no graph, so it looks horrible. Um, so we're gonna sort of add, when it comes to the graph, again, this is kind of personal, um, but I usually go with one like this. Um, and then just, just sort of compare it to how you how you like it. Also make sure you put motion blur on, I actually forgot to do that. Um, so hold on, if we, what, it's not a cool one. Just let it pre-render. So as you can see, this looks pretty, looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the graph. Uh, I'd maybe obviously make it like the full duration of the clip. You can maybe mess with this a little bit just to get the exact movement that you're going for. This is if this was an intro, then I'd kind of keep it smooth like this. But if it was in the actual edit, I'd maybe make it a bit sharper. But we'll just do it like this for now. Um, so yeah, once we've done that, uh, that's pretty much it for that at the moment. You can move this back a bit if you want and sort of have it. You can work on the timings and just mess around with it however you want. Um, this is how I'll have mine looking for now. So then what you want to do is um, just pre-comp these two clips. Uh, I'll just call this clip one. So yeah, once you pre-comp these, it's like that. Um, add another null like on, on the top. And then we can now start doing the transition like beforehand. Uh, so I'm going to add optic compensation just to make it you know, look a bit smoother on, on the way out. So if you just, at the moment, just follow what I do because um, it kind of kind of bad at explaining things like this so then what, what I've done is keyframe the optic changed it to like maybe not 130 but like 120 maybe uh, again the values depend on the clip but I'm gonna just do scale like this uh, we can go from we'll go from the left side and just do kind of like this and just see how that looks and as you can see it's looking pretty good so far. I just want to make sure the movement's like consistent so it doesn't look stiff. Um, like 
that and then so now um a pretty important step add an adjustment layer above it and cut it down to like where the zoom is going into um and then add a cc white time i usually change the backward steps to two um because it makes it a little bit smoother in my opinion and then just uh keyframe the opacity pretty much uh, and then keyframe those then it looks pretty, uh, obviously we just scaled it into 100 here. You don't need to do 100 if you want. If you think it looks too much, you can scale it down to like 70 or something. But I'm gonna just stick with uh, 100 for now. But that looks pretty good at the moment. Um, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Uh, so then what I do now is, y you can add quite a few things, but like I'll, I'll just do like an exposure and like a bokeh, just to sort of add a blur. So now keyframe this. I won't mess with the settings too much because we're just trying to keep this fairly simple um then we'll turn this down like that and then bring this back so we've just scaled in the uh the blur and the um the exposure like i said if i'm going too fast at the moment slow it down and you can sort of copy my um my settings i use and stuff like that uh we don't really need to graph this too much to be honest we can kind of just keep this how it is not that's not that big of a deal uh, i will quickly mess with the graph that I did a little bit just because I think it is a bit slow so if I just move this like up a bit as you can see it now it will now be a bit faster we still want to keep it smooth um, so that still looks pretty good so then maybe extend this a little bit like that So yeah, it's kind of like that at the moment. Uh, now this kind of comes down to personal preference, but you can put like a, a warp in. Um, obviously, so you can do like a squeeze warp, which sometimes just towards zooming in, and then put warp, change this to squeeze, and then you can keyframe uh, the bend and put it like at the beginning. Uh, obviously, you can still see the, the black part at the moment. Just ignore that. Uh, we're just going to copy that like this. Easy ease them. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it too much because you will see the tiles. Oh, not 100. <laughs> uh, so change that to like 20. And then add the motion tile. And I'll put the motion tile like behind it. Kind of like this. Like I usually do like this kind of thing. And it doesn't look too bad as it zooms in so it's just a nice little like, warp squeeze and, and then the final step that i'd say add like i said this is just a simple tutorial on like the basics of doing it um you can now add a vignette to hide the um the what's it called like uh tiles from the from the uh, warp and just it looks good anyway to be honest so like i, I usually size this to like put it to, like zero for now or like to 1.5 so it's barely showing then if you bring it like over and change this down to like i'd say since the clips like zoomed out on him and you can still you can't really see much around here i zoom in quite a bit and then as it's going in as the clip's going in you want to just bring it back out so it's kind of like this and put that to like the end duration obviously with text and stuff this would look a lot better um and effects like the, we're just doing the transition at the moment so then this will kind of look like this looks pretty good at the moment i'd say yeah that looks fine so um like that and then obviously you can do the same if you want um with the jaws hold on one second so let's just say uh actually let's just say like this and then it sort of comes in and we can copy the vignette settings just so it lines up pretty well even copy the graphs if we want just just so it looks like i said yeah so it kind of looked like that and obviously with effects this would look a lot better um um and yeah i think i think it looks good um just obviously imagine with effects and stuff when i show the uh the overall effect i will add sort of cc um uh, but i might do a separate sort of cc tutorial in the future so let me know down below if um you want something like that but obviously just keep in mind like with this transition the main point is that the transition is seamless and it smoothly 
transitions you can barely tell when the clip actually fades in because it obviously comes in pretty uh smooth if you know what i mean so um but yeah i think that's pretty much it at the moment i said i just want to keep this kind of basic so people can you know follow still uh it, it may be more advanced tutorials in the future or i might stick to doing sort of the basic ones first just so people don't rush ahead but um yeah i hope this was helpful um appreciate it guys